Have you ever wanted to tell your friends that you went to Europe but you're short on cash? Are you Chinese? Are you from the Republic of Congo and wanna see literally nothing new? Come to Bucharest. Bucharest was founded by the only notable Romanian in history, Dracula, when he thought, hey, you know what would really piss off the Turks? What would really irritate them? What if we built a city on top of a filthy swamp full of mosquitoes and dysentery? That'd be fucking great. That would really own the Ottomans. I'd like them to try to invade this shithole. And here we are. Perhaps we deserve these mosquitoes. The name of Bucharest comes from the word Bucurie, which means joy. So Bucharest means something like the city of joy, or joyful you are. But don't let that fool you, there is no joy to be had here. Chapter 1. The Wonderful People Inside these concrete cages, we can find the fascinating denizens of Bucharest, comprised of many different factions and subcultures, like the Ministry of Education and Research, the police, religious minorities, and most notably, the many hidden sewer gypsy militias that can be compared to the Skaven from that series of games tailor-made for man-children with disposable income. Speaking of disposable income, one of these denizens also happens to be the so-called Mirchakit Sune, the man who is the author of the infamous Crystal Vault 3D animations and countless Twitter takes on the nature of animal consent. I know the location of his block back from when he had his coordinates on the furry map. Anyways, I lived four bus stations away from him. I even paid his block a visit once, meaning to strike up a friendly discussion. But I could not deduce the apartment he lived in. A real shame. I would have loved to have a conversation with the only other 3D artist in this city. Come to Bucharest! Chapter 2 Tourism Locations what is a tourism guide without some good locations to check out? But of course, we are Studio Guerrilla, not some ordinary tourism agency. So, we're not gonna recommend you the boring popular stuff. No, in this video, we have the most obscure interesting places for you to visit. For example, Polytechnica Metro Station. Nothing much going on at first glance, just a normal station. But the perceptive mind will realize people only go towards one exit, while the other is completely barren. That is, of course, because one exit connects to civilization, while the other puts you in the bumfuck wilderness. Grozavest Park. I used to go to this place before I grew common sense and nearly got mauled by a dog once and was also followed through the bushes by a creepy hooded figure who fortunately kept a safe 40 meter distance from me. To the untrained mind, it may seem like a piece of shit unmanaged plot of land filled with fleas and hypodermic needles, but very few people realize how useful this forgotten park is as a source of free second hand condoms. If you're in the mood for a park, but don't desire to get raped while visiting it, try Herastro Park. A bit mainstream, but it's got a nice lake in it, perfect for a family-friendly vacation spot. We used to have swans swimming about here, but after the communist government collapsed, a certain undisclosed ethnic group of people snatched those swans up and literally fucking ate them all. While you're near Herastro, be sure to check out Antipa Museum, which is sporting an impressive exhibition related to the Romanian natural sciences. You can check out this cool cow we dug up, or this man from Tulcea, they pay 40 cents an hour to stand there 24-7. I bring up Antipa Museum because of Bucharest's rich history. Back in 1944, we got invaded by the Russians, and when the unwashed tide of the Red Army finally reached Bucharest, they started pillaging the city. And then, they arrived at the Antipa Museum and found a room where we kept specimen jars suspended in alcohol. Oh boy, they hit the mother load. The specimen jars were not that big, holding only small gypsy fetuses or some shit. So, three hours later, not fully satisfied with the amount of preservation moonshine they had, 
the Russians come into the museum director's office, guns pointing, and ask, Где крокодил? Come to Bucharest! Chapter 3 Unexplained Encounters The following is an encounter I had while walking down right outside of Plaza Romania. The best place to watch a movie after going to the men's toilets on the third floor and touching the Albanic sticker. Back to the encounter story. I was around 14 at the time and completely unaccompanied by any adult. A black car drives up to me and in it there is this funny guy making signs to me. Curious, I woke up and in a perfect Romanian accent and vocabulary he says he's Turkish followed by a bunch of gibberish which I assume were Turkish words as proof. The man explains that he's in a bit of a tight spot needing about 50 lei to buy enough gas to get back home to Turkey. As he is pleading for the money, he brings up the fact that he has a golden ring he could sell to me. Literally right behind me is a fucking brightly visible yellow we buy gold sign. I point that out to him. He continues pleading saying he didn't understand me because he's Turkish and only knows a little bit of Romanian. He keeps asking me for 50 lei. First, fully putting the gold ring in my hand. The ring was not golden in color and looked more like the texture of a slightly yellow tin can. It didn't even shine. At this point, I know he's trying to rip me off, but I'm scared shitless and decide to just go along with it. I am 14, keep in mind, and built like a twig because of the countless famines. But I was a smart kid, smart enough to know that gold is supposed to be heavy. The ring wasn't, it was like holding a shitty plastic thing in my hand. I tried to give him back the ring, saying I didn't have 50 lei. This is where I stopped being a smart kid. To convince him, I take out my shitty plastic wallet and show him the insides. Only 2 lei, not enough even for a coke bottle. He looks at me, stops, contemplates about taking out the 2 lei but pulls himself together and fucking drives off. As he's driving away, I briefly see his car's license plate. He's from fucking Bucharest. Other funny encounters were when I saw some culturally different kids dumpster diving or when I got stuck in Uranus. Uranus, Uranus. It's this neighborhood near the White House. Let's, let's not talk about it. Am I a horrible racist for telling these stories? No, no, I am merely documenting the awful conditions the poor Romani people suffer through in this country. So, that something may be done about it, like helping them leave this god-awful place to much better nations, like France, the UK and the United States. Chapter 4 Digi Super Oferta For $10 a month, you get 917 megabytes per second internet download speed. That's right, Bernie. While your country collapses into a nightmare favela state, we're out here just fucking chilling. Come to Bucharest! Chapter 5 The Weather During the summer, you have to stay inside and avoid the sun if you don't want to suffer a heat stroke. Made more difficult by the fact that these blocks are made to retain heat in the winter. During the colder season, you will freeze your ass off inside as well as outside because the heat retaining feature of our blocks doesn't work if there isn't any heat supplied into the blocks. Thank you Romanian government for your infinite wisdom and competence. Conclusion Why aren't you packing up for Bucharest already? Come to Bucharest and get scammed out of your money by corrupt bus controllers. Come to Bucharest and realize why so many Romanians emigrate out of the country. Come to Bucharest where loud repeating bangs outside are not mass shooters but old people beating their carpets. Come to Bucharest and realize that all things considered, it's not that bad of a place. Certainly better than other metropolises, it's actually a genuinely decent city. So if the borders open up from Corona, I invite you all to the city of joy. Come to Bucharest and pack a few expensive watches to flaunt them around. I have four children and a fat wife to feed. Or alternatively, consider donating a little bit to the newly opened official Studio Guerrilla PayPal link. Help me pay back the many amazing people who have helped me all this time for free. So in the case any one of them becomes an Albanian loan shark, they will not come after me, my mud hut, 
and my precious Funko Pop collection. Thank you all for waiting so patiently without sending me any death threats. See you in July after I get over some life-defining exams. Until then, keep it real.